For those of you who haven't tuned into the Natural Gland Bodybuilding Patreon podcast, it is on Patreon. The link is in the description. For only five bucks a month, you get access to podcasts as they come up. And I do a podcast about once a week. So yeah, if you want to tune into that where I talk about stuff, you can send me questions and I just answer back and forth in the podcast. So you can listen during your workouts or when you're driving to work or when you're driving around the mountains and hunting monsters or whatever the hell it is you're doing, you know? Uh, yeah, you can tune in just straight on Patreon there. Mountain. The link is in the description. Train the muscles, not the joints. Welcome back to Natural Land Bodybuilding. Mountain. And today I'm gonna to talk to you a little bit about volume and what are a few signs that you're doing too much or perhaps you're doing too much volume for you, right? Because this is all relative because I just had somebody purchase my three-day split program and my three-day split program is a higher volume type program, right? So those of you who have purchased my two-day split programs, you'll know that usually I prescribe to a lower volume, higher frequency sort of approach to training. But some people seem to really thrive on higher volume with a little bit more rest in between training body parts. And therefore that's why I made the three-day split program. Now, somebody just messaged me and they said they tried the three-day split and they're noticing that after only a few sets, <laughs> their legs are wobbling and they can barely even complete the other sets of the workout. Well, there's a few reasons why this might be happening. So I thought it would be good for me to outline them in a video just so you guys can kind of have an idea of when to adjust certain parameters just in case this is happening. Now, those of you who have been watching my channel for quite a while know that it's no secret at all that each of us have different constitutions and we thrive on different training techniques. You know, one person, it's high volume. One, another person, it might be lower volume and higher intensity. And another person, they might need a massive amount of rest in between sets and stuff. So programs are structures that may or may not apply to you, but they give you a good, clear indication of somewhere to start. And by seeing the differences in one program or another, you can see, obviously, what is working for you and what's not at this time. Now, one of the reasons why high volume might be shocking and you might be totally out of shape, right? You might be totally out of shape for high volume is because you've never done it or you've never challenged the muscles for a longer period of time. You've just done short bursts. Now, I'm not saying you're wrong or right about this, but what I am saying is that what your body is acclimated to will be what it's used to and therefore it will seem comfortable. And when you break out of that zone, even if it is for greater hypertrophy or greater strength or greater muscle mass gains, it might actually hurt and it might actually be really, really hard, right? So if you're noticing that you're doing a high volume training program because you've been doing the low volume training for a period of time and you want to change, don't be afraid to maybe ease into it a bit. So say your program prescribes 12 to 15 sets for a workout, well, don't be afraid to just do six or eight sets or, or 10 sets or something that's lower than uh, super high volume training, but at the same time, higher than what you have been doing before. Another thing that you might wanna do is that if you notice that you're not recovering or that you're so sore, like for days you're wobbling around and, and by the time you come around to that muscle group again, you're just too damn sore to be able to train it, well, take an extra day off. That's definitely something that you can incorporate in any training program, including the ones that you buy from a website. You can always incorporate an extra day off if you feel you need it, because like I said, it's impossible to take all people's individual sort of uh, constitutions into account. And, and also the other thing is that if you're not eating enough protein, don't be surprised if you're not recovering or if you're not eating enough food like protein and carbs or protein and fats, depending on what you seem to thrive on, if you're not eating enough, you'll notice that you will burn out really easy in the workout and you're, you're going to basically just flatline. Like you, you'll have a few sets in you and then after that you're like, man, I just want to get out of here because I'm so uncomfortable because the muscles don't have the glycogen that is needed in order to complete that workout. So one thing people say over and over again or have been saying for a long time is that diet is, is pretty much king. Well, I would say diet makes a massive role in how you feel. And if you're not eating the proper foods for you, you're going to notice that you have way less energy in the gym and doing a high volume approach when it comes down to training is really going to expose that. So if you're not eating enough food, 
you're going to be burning out really early and you're not going to be able to sustain any sort of energy uh, through your workout. So barring constitutional differences and, and what is the perfect program for you and stuff, like let's just throw that out the door just for a second. Uh, there's no doubt in my mind that if you're not eating enough food, you're going to burn out no matter what you're doing or your recovery is going to be so low that you'll be forced to do uh, much less stimulation in order to grow muscle. Let's put it that way. And you're going to be limiting your gains because of it, because food is what all the muscle is made out of, right? So that's definitely something to consider. So long story short, if you notice that you're doing a program and you're not recovering or you're not able to complete the sets without collapsing on the floor, right? <laughs> then don't be afraid to change the program a bit until you ease yourself into whatever type of stimulation that is the, uh, let's just say, uh, dominant form of stimulation in that workout program. So high volume would be a lot of sets, so maybe you would do a little bit less sets. If you're doing a program that has to do with high amounts of weight, like high intensity, like you're doing super low rep sets and you find that because you're doing such heavy weights, you're getting joint pain or you're not recovering or or things are going wrong, uh, don't be afraid to take an extra day off or maybe not go so extreme in the weight. Maybe you're doing four rep sets. Well, maybe six rep sets or seven rep sets work better for you uh, for hitting close to failure, right? Or, or eight rep sets or nine rep sets because then the weight's not quite as intense on the joints. So you have to make these small adjustments as you go and sometimes if you don't make them, yeah, you, you may end up with a, a little bit of a problem, right? So always, no matter what program you're doing, and if you're noticing the program's causing some issues, then just make small adjustments. Maybe lower the intensity a bit through weight, maybe lower the intensity through volume, maybe lower the frequency, or maybe take an extra day off or so uh, per week and you'll notice that uh, perhaps some of the problems you're having will clear right up. The other thing you'll notice is that uh, you'll have a certain threshold for volume so say you can do five sets of something for around 13 to 15 reps and you notice maybe your reps come down like two or three reps by the time you get to your fifth set or maybe they come down four or five reps, who knows. Uh, but at some point you'll notice that the reps will just drop off like crazy. Like you'll be doing sets of 15 reps, then 14 reps, then maybe, maybe 11 reps and then all of a sudden you're only getting like five. That's usually a good indicator that you're done that exercise and it's time to move on to the next exercise or the next body part. Now this doesn't mean that you never should push volume threshold because that is one form of stimulating muscle and, and muscular growth and hypertrophy, right? So the odd time I do use higher volume and then the odd time I use higher intensity, lower amounts of volume with a higher frequency type training, like in the two day splits or the whole body high frequency workouts. So it's good to kind of go back and forth. But if you're pushing the envelope in, in too much of an extreme, uh, you might not be doing yourself justice. So again, don't be afraid to make adjustments and ease yourself into whatever type of stimulation that you're trying to uh, get your body acclimated to. Mantra. So yeah, I hope this helps you out in your training. Thanks a lot for watching. And thanks a lot for getting in the way of my video game time. Uh, I'm gonna go play some video games. Look at the dexterity that CrossFit. CrossFit. Natural land.